Okay, let's get started. Now, every Saturday, there's a show called BS. And I really wanted to, to join that show, but I had some stuff going on, and I couldn't join the show. This Saturday, past Saturday, was about conspiracy theories. And I intended to be a member of that show. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't do that. Now, one of the reasons why I can't do that is because, well, I freaking have bronchitis, and it sucks. It's getting better, but it still sucks. So, let's go ahead and get into the jiffy of what I was talking about and what I was going to share. This might be a multi-part video, but I'll do my best. First and foremost, before we can get into anything, I need you to understand what a hologram is and how a hologram works. Now, I'm going to show you a diagram here. I'm going to walk you through it. All right, here we go. This is a diagram. So what you have is a laser that comes through a beam splitter and it splits it into two different directions and they diffuse. One laser ends up hitting in the middle of the middle object you see there, but the other one touches something called the holographic emulsion or the holographic plate in this scenario. And then that reflects off and they create the three-dimensional object. The most important object here is the actual holographic plate. I really can't stand the green screen. It sucks, it's terrible, and I always blip it in and out. But the most important thing there is the holographic plate. And the reason why is because the way it stores information and data. Now, if I took a picture, like this one behind me here, and I cut it in half, we would have two halves of one whole picture. If I cut it in half again, I would have four one-fourths of one full picture. And with a holographic plate, that's not the case. It uses something called Fourier transforms, which is a type of mathematics. Your brain does the same exact thing, and so does the universe. And what this does is it says the whole is the same as every point, and every point is the same as the whole. If you cut a holographic plate, holographic plate in half, you would have two holes of one whole picture. And you cut it in half again, you'd have four holes of one whole picture. The only difference would be that you would have a distortion in the text, or the image itself, the quality would lessen the more you cut it down in pieces. But what's important is the information is everywhere, but it's projected to one point. Now, there's a book called The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. I highly recommend you read that book before you go any further into this theory. With that said, let's get started. Now, this is more of a hypothesis than it is a theory. Uh, I have no experimentation that's done to try to prove this, and this is something I wrote when I was 16 years old. Now, this is quite important, but there are some conjectures that I have in this theory that need evidence, it needs data. There needs to be more information here for this to be a fully fledged out theory. But with everything going on with the aliens that we're talking about right now, and with all of the um, other information is coming about, I really think now is a good time to go ahead and share my ideas and thoughts and see what you might think. First of all, my theory states that we, we are programs. Everything vibrates, and the vibrations themselves are part of an ongoing, maintained program that creates what we are, that creates the projection that is our entire existence. This program can be manipulated, at least on a localized level. And this means that if you knew the programming language itself, and you knew how to inject the frequencies properly, then you should be able to ma manipulate the program itself. If not, the core program laws, like the law of gravity or <laughs> energy transference. What this essentially means is that it's possible to teleport literally from one point in the universe to another point in the universe with minimal energy cost and as a result to any time, any space, anywhere you can manipulate anything, any energy again, any time, any place, anywhere with minimal energy requirements because hyperspace is pure energy, unprogrammed energy and we exist inside of hyperspace, kind of like you have a big ocean and you have whales and fish in the ocean. The whales and fish would be the programs, they would be the projection. Hyperspace completely engulfs everything in it. Hyperspace has an osmosis effect, meaning if it does not have a program protection, then it will be recycled back into pure energy all over again, ready to be reused. 
our world is governed by those laws of physics, that program, that baseline protection that keeps us in basically you in this place and in this time. So you don't just blip in and out of a tree somewhere 300 years in the past or well, the future. And on top of that, um, I believe that, sorry, coughing fit. I believe that the um, connection between the quantum potential, i.e. the holographic plate, and the projection or the universe is through hyperspace. That's the connection. And I believe that the connection between the physical realm and hyperspace is electricity or electromagnetism. And that connection is stronger or weaker in individuals because guess what? Your brain uses neurons to transfer energy and information throughout your body. And as a result, it uses electrons. And because of this, you have a direct connection to hyperspace-ish. There's a resistance there that makes it so that we spread apart instead of all coming together in one gigantic bulb point, if you might say, kind of like a Big Bang Theory might predict. Um, and the idea here is that... Hang on. Anyways, my theory and experimentation is that if you took a hollow sphere of metal and placed a solid sphere of metal inside of it and levitated it in there in the middle so it didn't touch any sides and then created a solid wall of electricity throughout the gap between the two balls and then you had a pin go inside just a little bit to allow you to inject using cymatics um, an energy frequency to manipulate that field. If you're able to do that, then you could theoretically connect directly to hyperspace. And if you can connect to hyperspace, you can connect directly to the quantum potential. And if you can connect to the quantum potential, then you can have direct access to anything and everything, projected and not projected, throughout the entire universe, time and space all combined. Now on the topic of the aliens, if you assume that everything they said was correct and true, um, the aliens are not aliens from far distant galaxies and distant planets. They're from right here in another dimension. Not a higher dimension, necessarily, and not a parallel dimension, necessarily, either. Um, they live in parallel to us, but it doesn't mean that there's a copy of you over there. Essentially, means if you, kind of like ghosts would be in our world, uh, if you believe in ghosts or have seen movies of ghosts, that they're here... And most of the time, they're not corporeal, meaning you don't see them. They cannot interact with you any way, shape, or form. You can't see them, no way, shape, or form, or anything like that. Um, but they exist. They're there. And imagine for a second that if we had discovered a way how to traverse this dimension, um, how we might treat another alien species that we saw essentially living in the same plane as us. Um, yes, they'd be aliens, but... They're right here, and it's not really that difficult to get there. Um, can we honestly say that we, as Americans, or the Russians, or the Chinese, or North Koreans, would treat an alien species that was far less um, technologically advanced any better or worse off than another being discovering us? I'm not sure that we would. And with that said, it kind of explains what's going on here. But what's interesting is about the technology they talk about the aliens using, my theory predicts, and it says it's possible, because if these beings are from a different dimension, then they most likely view the universe differently than we do, especially if they live in this technology. That's their world. That is their universe. They don't experience time the same way we do. They don't experience space the same way we do. They blip from one point to the next, because they already exist there everywhere. And they're just boom, 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 boom. They literally would know every other living creature in the universe, or at least every other species, and where they are and how to get there, how to communicate with them. But having this available means a lot to us, especially if we're trying to reverse engineer it. It's quite dangerous. Because as you may have already thought, anyone with the technology of my theory, if my theory is correct, would essentially have godlike powers, and it's quite dangerous. With that said, I believe there's a lot more to share and say, and if you would like to know more about that, please go ahead and give me a follow, and I'll try to make more videos. Go ahead and ask your questions down below, and let's see how we go.